Now, my next guest was last on the show, along with her husband, former Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg. It was back in 2017, and they were telling me all about their teenage son, Antonio, who'd been diagnosed with cancer. Well, this year marks three years of him being in remission. Mary it is so good to see you. How's he doing? Okay. He's doing very well. That's very great. Well. I'm really so pleased. That what a worrying, worrying time it was for all of you. Now, look, yeah. mum of three boys, yes. mum of three boys, <laughs> but so passionate about inspiring young girls. Absolutely, and I think that, you know, trying to make sure that girls feel just as boys and as empowered as boys yeah. is something that concerns everybody, the mothers of girls, the mothers of boys, the fathers as well, <laughs> everybody in society. Sure, so tell me about Inspiring Girls, this whole sort of global, it's a, it's a wonderful thing, it's like a global summit that's happening. That is correct. We are already in 13 countries, soon to be 14, because Morocco is coming on board. And we have now devised a new tool using technology so that we can make female role models available to girls who have access to internet all over the world so that there are no barriers, no boundaries anymore. So, I mean, some of these role models obviously will be people that we know, yes. but not necessarily. You know, it can just be yes. women who are doing amazing things like in, the, in the fields of technology or science, or, or it could be showbiz, it could be so many different things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, whether you're an influencer, yeah. you could be whatever. Anything. If you've got something that you to say and you want to get it out there to other young girls thinking that will help them, Exactly. You self-record the video and you send it to us and then you tell us if you are available for talks with the schools remotely or in person right. and we just connect everybody together because there are so many wonderful women, you know, women who don't make it to television all the time and to glossy magazines, <laughs> but they are amazing. So yeah. this is about connecting them to the girls. Well, no, it's brilliant because, I mean, we just saw there was something the other day about two female astronauts are going to be actually doing a, a spacewalk, I think, imminently. You know, that, that's incredible. But actually, people beavering away maybe for charities or, again, for education, yeah, yeah. It's, it's this sort of thing. From your experience, what difference does that make to young girls who watch these videos? Well, I think it makes a big difference because you cannot really dream of being something yeah. unless you have seen it. And, and you could be surprised to see how many girls, when we ask them, what do you want to do in life? most of it is traditional jobs. Yeah. It's like, but this has very little to do with the, the jobs in the real place now. Mm. No? And 70% of the girls tell us that they have changed their view about the future after they have talked to our role models. You know, our role models are normal women, right? <laughs> so it's just about connecting normal women to girls. It makes perfect sense. And of course, you've moved to Silicon yes. Valley. Yes. The whole family has moved. Almost 20 years married, Miriam. I know. Almost 20 years. <laughs> and it's about it compromise. Feels like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of about compromise, isn't it? Because I know that you're back here all the time because you've got a yeah. very, very high flying job in banking and you're sorting all of that out, as well as doing the, the inspiring girls too. You know, there's all of that going on. But a marriage works because you've got to compromise, haven't you? Always. Well, life is a compromise, yeah, but it's it not only a compromise in relation to your partner or in relation to your children, it's also mm. in relation to your parents and <laughs> your friends. You know, life is all about. Compromise. Mm. And sometimes you can be at the center of whatever you do, and some of the times you, you have to, Ooh, you know, put others uh, there. No? Do you miss being at the sort of heart of UK politics, or were you quite glad to see the back of that the way things are? Well, I, I don't know politics because mm. you know it's all time consuming. So I don't think that you can be close to politics for a very long time. Yeah. It's very healthy to step <laughs> in and out. But I do miss obviously. London in particular, I yeah, think yeah, that yeah. this is a place close, close to my heart. Mm, no, very much so. I mean, we are, we are quite divided. We are quite a divided nation right now. Um, and seeing it from, from... I mean, the thing is, you're Spanish, obviously. You've lived in London. You now live in, in America. You're kind of like a citizen of the world, really. So for, and and you, you strike me as the kind of person that wants to kind of like bring people closer together. You know, the work you're doing with Inspiring Girls, for example. And yet here we are, this nation very fractured, as indeed is the USA. But I think that the world generally, you know, we are all much more uh, divided. But I have to say, I come from a country that had a civil war. So whenever people yes. tell me this is the most divisive time, I think, you know, put things a little bit in, mm -hmm. in perspective. And I think I very much believe that, that all of us who believe in an, in an open world and, and in believing in the future yeah. <laughs> and about connecting people, you know, we just need to look for what is there in, in common. And we may disagree passionately about some of the political issues, but still there is much more in life than yeah. politics where we can 
all come together no, and help. You know? Exactly. What we are doing now is about helping the next generation. Surely this is in everybody's interest. Absolutely, because it's, it's about hope, isn't it? It's about hope and optimism, and that's what you're trying to do with this campaign. And that's what we really need, Miriam. We really need this mm -hmm. right now, and especially for our young women and our young men, of course. We shouldn't ignore them too, but particularly for young girls. And, the, and it, it means that in the future, hopefully, they will make a difference. I think it's about hope, and it's also about how easy this is. You know, sometimes we go around problems and especially on gender issues you know mm. we have talked about the very same things for years and years it's like can we just all move into problem solving mode and do a tiny little bit <laughs> to to make things better so mm. 10 minutes 10 minutes that's <laughs> all that's all it takes no you're absolutely right and we do have to get we have to get more women in politics as well more women in public life it's hard it's it's difficult and it's yeah. difficult to put yourself out there but yeah. it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. It's hard everywhere. I think that going to the, to the top of every job, mm. of every profession, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's politics or anything else, yeah. you, you see women falling down there somehow down mm. the path. And for me, what is very interesting is to see that it doesn't matter whether it's in my village, whether it is here in London, or whether it is in Silicon Valley, the issues affecting girls and that, that drop in self-confidence that they get when they are 12, 13, 14, that happens everywhere.